Hi guys, I'm Shahan Ngamsian. I'm a third year undergraduate student in psychology here at Middlesex and I'm also a student learning assistant. So today we are here to have a roundtable discussion about academic anxiety. Um, so a while back the LET organized an online survey and we asked you students to share with us your concerns, experiences and questions that you have about stress and anxiety related to your academic life. And the response from you guys has been incredible. You have been so honest and genuine in sharing your experiences with us. And so we have been able to organize this roundtable discussion here today, thanks to your participation. Um, and to help us to discuss and better understand your concerns, we have the immense privilege of having Mahan Singh Denaran here with us today. Yay. Um, so really Mahan needs no introduction at all, but for those of you who don't know him yet, Mahan is a chartered psychologist with the British Psychological Society, specializing in adult psycho psychotherapy since 2015. Um, he has more than 20 years, 21 years, sorry, of clinical experience, and he has been with us here at Middlesex University Mauritius for six years now. Uh, he is currently a lecturer in psychology, and he is the head of counseling and mental health services. Mahan, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for receiving me. Oh, pleasure. Um, and before we get right into the discussion, we'll have a round at the table and I'll allow my peers to introduce themselves briefly. Hello, I'm Rafina. I'm from the University of Virginia, and I am part of Student Learning Assistant and Digital Ambassador. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Hakim Chaman. I'm year two psychology student with counseling skills and I'm part of the Student Council and the Student Ambassadors. Hello, I'm Kinjal Joshi. I'm a year two business management student and I'm part of the Digital Ambassadors team. Hello, my name is Vidushi. I am a final year student studying APOB and uh, I am a member of Media Cluster. Hey, my name is Precious and I'm a second year business management student and I'm the mental health ambassador. Uh, my name is Noor Yadadi and I'm a year one of computer science and systems engineering. Hello, I'm Raisa, I'm an LLB of three, and I'm part of Logistic Society. Hi guys, my name is Steph O'Neill, um, I'm from Zimbabwe. I am a third year psychology with counselling skills student, and I am also a student learning assistant. Okay. So to facilitate um, the discussion today, we're going to address the concerns theme by theme. And the first one is about stress from assignments, exams, and deadlines. So I now invite Risa to please share an experience with us. Uh, well, I often feel overwhelmed with the amount of work uh, that are in the assignments and the time frame that, it, uh, that are given to us. I am always stressed when it comes to deadlines and exams. It looks like I'm entangled in this vicious loop. For me, deadlines is equal to stress. In order to become more productive and successful, how can we cope with the stress related to deadlines and assignments? I think the starting point is to try and understand what is stress. Basically stress is caused when there's an imbalance between a demand which is made on you. It could be something which is physical, emotional or psychological on one hand, as well as your coping mechanisms. Now if I ask you to name something, if you have too much of it, that it's good for you, can you name anything? that if you have too much of it, it's good for you. The point I'm making here is that too much of anything is not good for you. All right. Take this bottle of water. It's relatively light. Now, if I basically held this for one minute, do you think it's going to give me a problem? Will it be a problem for me? No. For one minute? No. no. How about if I basically held this bottle of water for one hour? What's going to happen to my arm? In a pain it's going to ache. Now what would happen if I walked around the campus holding this bottle for 24 hours? Impossible. <laughs> right. So metaphorically speaking it's the same thing with stress. If we think about something for one minute it's not really a problem. If we're constantly thinking about something, our stress is in life, after about an hour or so it's going to become a bit painful. It's going to ache. Now, if we're constantly thinking about our worries, our stresses, for 
24 hours a day, our minds are going to become paralyzed and numb. So the point is, is to establish a balance. Put the water bottle down. Everyone's different. People have different thresholds for tolerating stress. Some people can thrive on stress, so they may not get started on an assignment very early. They may leave it to the 12th hour. You've got other people, they can't do that. So what I would encourage as a rule of thumb is to get started as soon as possible. Because you don't want to leave things into the last moment because that bottleneck, when you leave your assignment to the last moment, it creates stress. The other thing to do is, is to take your task, your assignment that you need to do, and don't think about the end product just yet because that can be quite daunting. Break it down into manageable chunks. Then what you need to do is every time you work on one of those mini tasks, at the end of the day, once it's completed, give yourself a reward. That way, you basically work towards your end goal. The other thing as well is that once you've completed one of these mini tasks, it should give you a boost or a shot of confidence. I never seem to work on my assignments in advance. I often find myself procrastinating, and due to that, I often find the deadline is already upon me. Because of this, I won't miss the deadline. So how can I keep myself motivated and overcome the tendency to procrastinate? I think it's a question of identifying how are you procrastinating because the way people procrastinate differs from one person to the next. Some people procrastinate by when they're supposed to be doing their work, they go into the social network sites, they go into Facebook, they go into Instagram, they may find themselves maybe checking their emails. Other people may, in order to not feel so guilty about procrastinating, they may go and do house chores, but that's a form of procrastination or they may go and eat food. So I think the first thing to do is to become aware of how are you procrastinating. Me personally, I'm aware of how I procrastinate. And in front of my laptop when I'm working, I've actually got a board and I've written down the ways that I procrastinate and I keep reminding myself. So when I get an urge to maybe go and check the emails or maybe to go and do a chore, I remind myself. Second thing I would recommend is to find out when does your brain function the best. Some people, they can work um, during the early hours of the morning. Other people, they, they tend to work during the afternoon. And then you get other people that can work during the late evenings. So when does your brain function the best? Perhaps it's best to work when there's fewer distractions, i.e. later in the evening or during the early hours of the morning. The other thing which you could do is to be aware of constructive procrastination tasks. How about, for example, doing in-text citations or making a reference list for your work? So when you get the urge, a really strong urge to procrastinate, have these constructive procrastination tasks, which you can, you can do. The other thing to bear in mind, coming back to something which you said, is that motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps it going. So it's very important to be disciplined. So when you're working, perhaps put your phone on silent, put it out of your line of sight, and focus on what you're doing. Get into a routine. So let's just say, for example, you've identified, okay, I tend to work best waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning. Stick to that routine. It's worth reminding yourself that when you start doing something, okay, it's difficult to motivate yourself. But when you, when you get into it, it's going to become easier and easier. It's just like when you're going to the gym. You wake up early hours of the morning and you're making so many excuses why you don't want to go to the gym. So you're saying, okay, it's raining, it's cold, I've got other things to do. But then when you get into the gym, after the first five, ten minutes, for example, you really get into it and you feel good about yourself. Okay, so it's just worth rem remembering that. Um how can I stay motivated and maintain my focus while learning online from abroad? Great question, Steffi. Um, what I would recommend is to basically establish, I'm sure you've all heard of this, SMART goals. So goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, achievable, realistic and time-related. Okay. So whenever you've got an assignment or you've got a task, 
Okay, establish smart goals. Then the other thing is well, is that, as I highlighted earlier, establish a routine. Okay, establish a routine from when you're going to log into your course. When are you going to study? Then basically create some remain some reminders for due dates. When do you have to submit formative, summative assignments? Give yourself ample breaks. Okay, our brains tend to grow when we're resting or we're sleeping. So it's very important to give yourself ample breaks, okay, for you to assimilate what you've learned. You've got the disadvantage of not being present in the class and not having face-to-face -face contact with your peers or with the lecturer. But that doesn't mean you can't get social. So what I mean by that is maintain contact with your peers and with your lecturers by messaging them on a regular basis. Some people set up WhatsApp, emails, you can use discussion blogs and forums, so you can still find ways of interacting with the class. Again, it's very important to establish a good balance. Okay, so eat healthily, okay, maintain, make sure that you're exercising sufficiently, have this balance between work, rest, exercise, socializing hobbies and play. I'd also suggest that you share your knowledge with other people in your social circle. So for instance, with your family and friends and try to forge some kind of link or an association between uh, your personal and your work life. Because by sharing your knowledge, this develops a sense of accomplishment and achievement. The other thing is was to reward yourself on a regular basis and keep a positive attitude and to stay motivated. Thank you, Ahen. Um, we now move to our next theme, which is about time management, and we will invite Precious to share experience with us. For me, it's about how to manage my time. Over the years, I've learned how to manage my life and my school activities, but it gets really tough sometimes. How can I learn how to manage my academic workload and leisure? If I ask you, can you actually manage time? You can't manage time. But what you can do is you can manage yourself. Okay, so this concept of managing time, I don't advocate. You can manage yourself better, and in doing so, you can protect time. We don't set out with a plan to fail, we fail to plan. So it's just very important that you have a plan in place for when are you going to complete certain tasks, rewarding yourself, and then basically moving on to the next task. So as I aforementioned, it's important to ensure you've got a balance between work, rest, socializing, exercise, hobbies, and play. Because if there's an imbalance, this can cause problems. It can cause stress. So just being mindful of, do I have a balance in my life? Thank you, Mahan, that was a really interesting point. Uh, we now move to our last theme, which is about public speaking and class presentations. And I have Bidushi to please share the experience with us. For, so for me is that I once had an in-class presentation to make in front of about 100 students and I couldn't perform well because during the whole process I was continuously stuttering. This had a profound impact on my mental well-being as part of me was very frustrated as at the idea that I would never succeed in public speaking. I uh, usually struggle to ask uh, questions in class because I feel people would judge me or I would disrupt the class. How can we learn to deal with the stress of public speaking? So in terms of the stress of giving a presentation or public speaking, what is so anxiety provoking about this? Well, there's four reasons why people find this anxiety provoking. One, because they perceive they're not in control. Two, because they think something catastrophic is going to happen. Three, because of social judgment. And four, because of the uncertainty of what's going to happen. I'll ask you a question. Is it possible to be relaxed and stressed at the same time? Yes. Can you? Stressed and relaxed? No. I don't think so. They're two incompatible states of mind. So if you're relaxed, you won't be stressed or aroused, okay? Second thing I'll ask you, when you think about the 
situation of public speaking or giving a presentation, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? Let's just say you hash it up. You make a, you make a big, big mistake, it's a big drama. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Is it going to be the end of your life? Okay, so it's about putting things into perspective. It might be bad, but it's not the worst possible thing that can happen to you in your life. So basically, your mindset is very important. Do you come into this situation with a fixed mindset, where you basically view this as being a problem? Or do you basically view this, or do you have a growth mindset, where you come into this saying to yourself, this isn't a problem giving a speech or giving a presentation, it's a challenge and it's an opportunity for me to grow as a person. Now we've heard of the concept of po post-traumatic stress disorder, but have you ever heard of post-traumatic growth? So when you're posed with a stress, you adapt, you become more dynamic and you grow as a person. So when you're approaching a situation where you have to give a presentation, view it not as being a problem and using avoidance behavior. View this as an opportunity. It's a challenge that you're relishing. And even if you make mistakes, it's about reflecting on the mistakes you've made and building on that in order to become more resilient and to grow as a person. So your mindset here is very, very important. Thank you, Mahan. Um, we have been able to cover so much here, but you know from the survey we have so much more experiences and concerns about students share with us. Um, so maybe perhaps you could share with us a bit more about the student services available here um, for the students. I think it's uh, important for students to realise that um, they're not alone. So we've got the LET service. So if students are encountering difficulties academically, first port of call is to speak to the LET service. Additionally, we've got the counselling service and with the counselling service we tend to work with difficulties which are mild to moderate. So students who may be encountering or experiencing rather depression, stress, anxiety, bereavement, it could be procrastination, motivation, difficulties. We offer four sessions of counselling to students. For students that may be experiencing acute emotional crises, we also have um, my colleague, Devisha Desain, who's the mental wellbeing advisor. And I'm also pleased to be working with Precious as the mental wellbeing ambassador. Now, as well as having these resources, we also have um, FICA, which is an app which you can download on your mobile phone. It's a mental health app. So you can obtain that from Google Play. There's also what we call the Big White Wall, which is an online uh, resource. And that's packed with different uh, resources, self-help material that you can follow online, how to manage stress, how to manage procrastination, depression, insomnia, even quitting smoking and substance misuse difficulties. That's just to name a few. We will be rolling out a psychoeducational program to staff and students. You're free to attend. So each week there's going to be a theme, how to manage stress, how to manage substance misuse, how to manage anxiety, etc., etc. A culturization stress, how to develop a growth mindset, emotional intelligence. So this is what we have planned as from October onwards. Well, on behalf of everyone here, we would like to thank you, Mahan, for making the time to be with us today. And of course, I would like to thank my peers here for representing the student body. And of course, I'd like to thank you students for taking the time to do the survey because it's because of you guys that we're able to have this roundtable discussion today. So thank you guys and see you around.
We are Middlesex University Mauritius. 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 We are Middlesex University Mauritius.